So what's the deal with boric acid? And does your vagina need it? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, and I'm so excited to talk about this topic today. Before I dive into boric acid, and we're gonna dive, I wanna show you this shirt that I'm wearing today. So I just love this shirt, and it was sent to me from Dr. Heather Irabunda, who's a board certified OBGYN and who I love. We talk all the time online. She's got a new podcast coming out called The Advisory Cervix, which I love. And she sent me this, it just showed up yesterday. She didn't ask me to promote or anything, but I just think you should check her out both on Instagram, TikTok, and her new podcast, so check her out. And before we jump into boric acid and all the things we're gonna talk about. If you like this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the bell so that you get notified every time I put up a new video. Okay, what is boric acid? Boric acid is a weak acid and it has been used for a long time for many things. You may know it as an insecticide, rat poison. It's used to clean mold. It's part of flame retardants. It's used in swimming pools to keep it free of algae. Here's one that I learned while researching this topic, and now you know this fun fact too. It's used to treat boron deficiency in plants. I had no idea. But what we're talking about today is using boric acid to treat vaginal discharge. I don't know about you, but I have seen a ton of boric acid ads and companies that are coming out with their own formulations in the past couple years, and so many of you have asked me on my social media channels, Dr. Lincoln, should I be using this in my vagina? Is this important? I, I don't know what this is. Is this legit? So we are talking about it today. Here are some companies who make boric acid and who market it to people with vaginas. So here's PhD boric acid vaginal suppositories, and here's what they claim that they do. Um, they help to eliminate vaginal odor and support the vagina's natural balance. It can also be used preventatively for odor caused by sex, menstruation, medications, and hormone fluctuations, which can happen during menopause, birth control pill use, or as the result of having an IUD. And here's what they claim. PhD helps hundreds of thousands of women regain their confidence and get their life back. Moving on to Love Wellness, which I think is one of the more popular ones out there marketed to Gen Z, um, and they've got their, they've branded the killer. Do you want a killer in your vagina? I don't know. Anyway, um, they say it's a simple but powerful single ingredient solution for maintaining healthy levels of vaginal yeast and bacteria and a balanced vaginal pH. You're seeing a lot of this, right? Balanced, balanced, balanced pH. We're going to dive into that. They say it helps with vaginal odor and for use after your period or sex to feel fresh. I hate that idea that our vaginas have to be fresh and clean. Love Wellness does a fantastic job of promoting this idea. Very much purity culture, very much you need to be clean to be perfect. I've covered this in their other product. They have um, a vaginamin, a vitamin for your vagina that no, you don't need. I've covered that elsewhere. Um, and developed by a doctor, the killer is the original boric acid supp suppository, often imitated but never duplicated. And lastly, Honey Pot. They've got boric acid and herbs, so just together and um, it's got boric acid and tea tree oil. And they say that you can rebalance from the inside out with our seven day boric acid and herb suppositories. Many people use it to support the ongoing symptoms of BV. And they say our suppositories for pH balance are made with boric acid and tea tree oil for balance plus cocoa butter for moisture. Um, tea tree oil in your vagina, not a good idea. Okay, so these companies, they make these claims that they're going to balance your vagina, and a lot of them allude to the idea that you've got a yeast infection or a bacterial vaginosis or a BV. Are there claims backed up by science? Here we go. So I'm going to just jump right to it. Should you routinely use these products to treat routine bacterial vaginosis or yeast infections? No. Should you use these products to quote-unquote balance your vagina or preventively after your period or after sex or on a third Tuesday of the month? No. So bacterial vaginosis in a nutshell, it is the most common cause of abnormal vaginal discharge worldwide. And it's not a specific bacteria, but it's a disruption of the normal or the good bacteria in the vagina and the bad ones kind of take over. So it's kind of an unbalanced vaginal flora. One of the big ones that we often see is Gardnerella as the bacteria that takes over, but it can be a few different ones. Many people are symptomatic, but for those who do have symptoms, they might have a fishy odor or a gray thin vaginal discharge. Now for yeast infections in a nutshell, so about 75% of people with a vagina will at some point in their life have a yeast infection. So super common. And almost about half of them will have a recurrence at some point. It's usually caused by a strain of yeast called Candida albicans, but we can see other strains of Candida or other types of fungus causing yeast infections. Typical symptoms are that thick white cottage cheese discharge, itching, burning, red irritated vulva, 
For both BV and yeast, we do not recommend self-diagnosing because we're really bad at diagnosing ourselves and it can lead to overtreatment. And that's one of the reasons why I want you to say no to these boric acid suppository treatments that are over the counter. So boric acid is not recommended for the first line treatment for any of these. And it's not recommended to just use on a whim because here's the deal with boric acid. Yes, it is a weak acid. Yes, it has been used for hundreds of years for many different things, but think of boric acid like a bulldozer. It goes in and it just kind of kills everything in its path. So as opposed to targeted treatments for BV or yeast, you know, targeted antibiotics or antifungals that select out the specific bugs we want to get rid of, boric acid just kind of gets it all. And we know that when you use it for a few weeks at a time, there's a very high chance that you could end up with some irritation of the vaginal vulvar skin because there, it's sensitive in there. That vaginal mucosa is not meant to be constantly bombarded with things. And so long-term treatment can actually cause more harm than good. There's no data to support using these treatments alone or first line. Now you might come at me and say, well, Dr. Jen, there's no data because no drug company has studied it. And that's why. And I'm all for more studies, trust me. Why can't these companies like Love Wellness or Honeypot or PhD, can they please make these, do these studies because they're not that hard to do and then we can have the data. But instead, why would they? Because they can just make their product and they're not FDA approved, right? They're not seen as a medication, they're seen as a supplement. So they don't have to prove that they work to put them on the shelf. So they're not gonna waste their time because they can make more money without doing that and just doing some really savvy marketing. And here's the problem with just using boric acid the way that these companies recommend it, which is like just for a seven day random cleanse or after sex or when things just don't feel fresh besides the harmful terms that we're using there that make you feel like your vagina has to be like a rose bush. The, the problem here is that they're encouraging treatment without evaluation. And I am not saying that I want you to come in and get treated by a doctor because I wanna make money off of you, not at all. What, we, what I have seen routinely and many other gynecologists have seen routinely are people who have some symptoms, think it's BV, don't come in for a test, try these over-the-counter treatments, then it gets worse, then they have a reaction, then they try a yeast treatment, the monostat over the counter, then it gets worse, then they come in and they see us and now there's like a bunch of things that could be wrong and we have to spend a lot of time peeling back and saying, well, first of all, what is the diagnosis? What's worse now? Now it's more complicated. Like I said, studies have shown that we are bad at self-diagnosis and I'm not saying you, I mean all of us, like myself included. Um, so when it comes to having symptoms, especially if it's your first time, please go in and be seen so that we can diagnose you and get you the correct treatment and you're not suffering unnecessarily for months trying to figure this out on your own. Like we're literally, we're here for you, we wanna help. So there actually are reasons when boric acid can be used. I'm not saying that all boric acid is bad, but they're very specific and here's what they are. The first one is when there's a bacterial vaginosis recurrence. The second one is for bacterial vaginosis suppression. And the third one is for the treatment of yeast that is not caused by the typical strain of Candida albicans. We call them non-albicans yeast. So for those kinds of yeast infections or ones that are resistant. So first things first, bacterial vaginosis recurrence, what does that mean? That means when you've had three outbreaks of diagnostically proven BV in 12 months. And we know what happens. 30% of people who have BV will have a recurrence within three months. And why do we think this happens? Why do we think some people are susceptible to recurrences? What we think is that it's due to a biofilm that develops along the vaginal mucosa and that makes it harder for some of our treatments to kind of penetrate and get targeted to the bacteria that we're trying to kill. Think of it as like this protective shield around these bad bacteria. And so here's where boric acid could potentially be helpful because it could help to break down that biofilm and let our treatments get to the cells that they're trying to kill. And that's why boric acid on its own should not be used because it's not a specific targeted treatment. Think of it as one prong of a multi-pronged treatment here. And so there's different regimens and how we use it. For some people, we might use boric acid for three to four weeks and then we go ahead and we hit them with the antifungals or antibacterial medications. And another regimen is where we reverse that. And this isn't something that you should just be winging on your own. We want to be monitoring you, seeing how you're reacting. We wanna do an exam. We wanna see how the vaginal mucosa looks. We wanna make sure that your symptoms are okay. This is not something that you should just be doing on your own. The second time where we might use boric acid is for BV suppression. So you've had some recurrent outbreaks and now we're trying to keep it from coming back. And there's not a ton of data on this, but sometimes what we do is we recommend the use of boric acid suppositories a few times a week. And again, since there's not great data, there's not great protocols, we really wanna make sure that you're doing okay, monitoring your symptoms, monitoring your vaginal health and working with you specifically. We don't wanna just say, 
buy it off the shelf and go use it and call me if something doesn't work out. It's just, it's just not the best way to care for you. And lastly, for that kind of complicated yeast infection that isn't from Candida albicans or is from a recurrent yeast infection di that has been diagnosed and ideally you have a yeast culture so we know what strain we're treating, we might use boric acid in a similar way that we use to treat BV, where we might use some suppositories a few times a week for a certain length of time, again, monitoring your symptoms, seeing how you're doing. I have said this multiple times, but in all these scenarios, it's ideal to partner with your gynecologist to make sure that this treatment is working for you. And even with us gynecologists, if we are struggling to get your symptoms under control, we might even refer you to a specialist within our field called a vulvovaginal specialist. And this is somebody who treats these kinds of things every day. And these infections can be really complicated and it's not something that you should just be out there trying to figure out on your own. So Dr. Jen, do you approve of these products? So back in my training, none of these products existed. And so when we did have people who needed boric acid, we would have them go to a compounding pharmacy where we would write out the very specific instructions of how to make these suppositories. Or you can make them on your own buying boric acid and gelatin suppositories with instructions on how to fill these gelatin suppositories. But I can tell you, it can be a little nerve wracking for people to say, you want me to go buy the rat poison and put that in my vagina? I get it. It's like not the best branding. So the fact that these products are out there and in dosages that I think are equivalent to what we would often have people compound, I do enjoy that. Although I'd never recommend the honeypot product because you don't need tea tree oil in your products, like keep it simple. Um, my problem with it is that when you go out and you buy these, even if you've been directed by your physician to use boric acid, you're giving money to these companies that are not evidence-based, that are shaming vagina owners by making them feel they need to be fresh. And you're just telling them, you know, you're, you're supporting them financially. And so they, they keep on doing what they're doing. So in a perfect world, you could still get these at a compounding pharmacy and leave all of that stuff out there. But I get it, like sometimes that's just not an access issue. And so if you're gonna use these products, I would say avoid ones that have extra stuff in them. And again, don't just go and pick them off the shelves. Please talk to your OBGYN if you're having concerns about discharge or you're worried about your pH or you feel like you're supposed to be buying these products because they're marketed to you. So super important if you're using boric acid suppositories. Boric acid is poison. I mean, hello, I've talked about how it's used to kill rats and roaches and other insects and algae and you know all sorts of things so yeah it's like literally a poison it's super important that you keep this somewhere where kids can't reach it because if they ingest it orally they can really be hurt and get very sick so you've got to keep it away from kids it's only supposed to be used vaginally it can cause some vulvar and vaginal irritation and so if you are noticing any redness or burning please let your healthcare provider know Oral sex should be off the table while you're using these for obvious reasons. And sometimes your partner, if they are penis owners or if they're placing their fingers in your vagina, um, they too can get skin irritation. So you may want to let them know about that or use protection like, um, you know, dental dams or condoms in those situations. You should not be using boric acid if you're pregnant or trying to conceive. We do not have safety data that is encouraging. In fact, it has shown to have some developmental issues in animal studies. So if you're worried about this and you're in either of those categories, please avoid boric acid. So to sum up, boric acid definitely has a role in gynecology and in vaginal care. It is a very limited role. It is not like what many companies say that it is. There are some indications for usage and you can see the references down in my show notes, but try not to fall for the hype. Boric acid, people make it sound like it cures cancer and can solve, you know, climate change and everything, and it, it can't. And if they're selling you something, remember, they've got skin in the game and they're not objective. I hope that was helpful. If you found that helpful, like I said, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, leave your questions, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more. And until next time, my friends, be safe out there.